And <clears throat> when we last gathered, the party made their way inside of Sterla City. They trudged their way through the alleys, or as Zeril called them, the shits. Uh, Draver got a brief lesson on the differences in technology of Wufenia compared to Palencia. They did a a little bit of uh, sidewalk cleanup as uh, things looked not very well kept to put it lightly and as they made their way out of there they ran into a few individuals that or at least one of them seemed to know Henry in some way shape or form and after the wrong words were said they were very quickly dealt with and from there they continued about their way as to figuring out where Francesca's place was they came to a a crosswalk in the seemingly center of the city. Yashua stuck his head inside one of the nearby clubs that had quite a few people inside. And once he received the correct directions, the party once again continued on their way until they made it to the building. Once inside, they were greeted by a wide assortment of music and people and light shows and Oh, quite a few people on the inside. And it was at this point <clears throat> that the party finally made contact with Francesca. And by doing so, Yashua and Zero met up again, and the party were briefly introduced to Cynthia, Francesca's assistant. And now, after that was said and done, Yashua asked a few questions and Francesca said that she would answer them after she's had her fill of dancing out the stress built up from the course of the day. And Henry had something of importance he wished to discuss with her, but he made mention of it. And then as he joined Francesca in her stress dancing, he beckoned the party to join him on the dance floor and thus last session ended right off the cusp of a impromptu uh, group dancing event and now our scene opens up with Francesca and the group inside of her VIP office and she is in the preparation of asking them some questions to answer that our session will begin today. <clears throat> so, I've got about... Oh... Well, I have to resume work at about 10.30, so I... I'm willing to stay up for about another hour, two, max, as we uh, get some things that need to be discussed out of the way. And so, Henry, you mentioned wanting to join this group as they continue on with what they were doing. Would you mind spelling it out in detail for me? Because, you know, I am a stickler for all the important information. Go run and get my ferret water. Oh. 
because I missed the last two seconds from we went into the office. Um, you know, she was just getting ready to ask the party a bunch of questions, and her first question was asking you for a proper explanation as to what you meant by joining the party. Oh, okay. So I wanted to. I'm very grateful to all her services and helping me out but I want to leave and not be here anymore and help out Drea and the rest of the guys okay well you were bound to come to that decision eventually because well hell even if you didn't decide to venture out on your own I would have sent you away anyway and had things been different instead of this group coming to us I would have sent you to them via getting in contact with Angela and having the roles be reversed essentially but nonetheless I don't have any objections to you joining them because well to be blunt, uh, I don't blame you for chasing the chance to reclaim your dimension where you came from because well, you're not from here and even though you've been here long enough to be considered one of us and I see you as a child I couldn't have, um, I'm not going to restrain you and clip your wings as the saying goes. Go on, feel free. Just, you know, when you have the chance, send me a message or anything of the sort from time to time. Oh, for sure I will. Right, right. Now, with that out of the way, that medallion your friend showed me earlier... That is not good that he found one of those. And the reason that it's not good is because that band of... I don't even know if thieves would be the proper term for them, but those heathens, let's just... Let's just call them heathens. That means they are expanding their range of activity outside of the city. And that, that is not good. And this, this is proof of that as they tend to purposely leave them as to show their mark or claim their territory as a heard one of them say as I interrogated slash tortured them. Moving along, though, uh, that group is known as Soul Liberation. At least that's what they call themselves. And their MO is essentially they purposefully seek out those that are not doing very well or those that are on the brink of quitting and ending everything and essentially having little to no hope in their own lives and as such they tell them all these sugar-coated fairy tales and Oh, you can come work for us, and we'll give you a sense of purpose. It's more or less a cult, but this cult also very often practices human and living creature sacrifice, so to say. Uh, I'm still trying to get all the details that I can, but according to 
one of the most recent reports that we got from one of our scouts before they were captured and tortured to death. They managed to relay that they extract the person's soul when they're at their lowest and then use it as a conduit for a type of ritual. But that is all of the information that we've been able to gather as of now in relation to that. God knows I would love to have enough to make a well let's just say if I had the information I wanted to have there would be a full scale assault going on as we speak as she looks to her watch and at zero when she finishes her sentence and uh yeah, that, that, that's also part of the reason why I put out the notice to be as safe as possible between the hours of 9 and 3 in the morning. Because alongside all of the unnecessary turf wars that occur, that's also a big problem. But that information is not public and will not be public for quite a while at least until the threat is completely neutralized but as for their records of activity I will let Zero explain that one since he was the one who brought it to my attention first as Zero approaches the table and he takes a <clears throat> he takes a swig out of whatever he's drinking from his bottle. Yeah, so the bastards decided to rear their heads. Ah, uh, fuck! Like a few months back, so long before. Well, not long before, but long before you all showed up and made your mark here. These guys, it, it, it started small, but we managed to temporarily corner one of their leaders. Uh, I believe his name was Gweed. And we managed to extract that they, quote, spread the righteous and good deeds of liberating the souls of the hopeless as to give them a better place so to speak in the afterlife however they also acknowledge that they are more or less completely stripping people of their free will via brainwashing magics of sorts and just when we were about to get the real meat of what we needed from him he was killed and immediately replaced and since then they've become harder and harder to track and this is just a theory a hypothesis a thought I have but, ever since this new guy running for a political seat got here, none of this should happen before then. So, my thesis, theory, whatever you want to call it, is that that bastard has something to do with this one way or another. And, I'm not going to act on it, because if I did, I probably wouldn't be here right now they've also actually hmm. what zero 
No, no, nothing. I was going to mention something that should be saved for tomorrow. Or later in the day. Uh. Yeah. About the, uh. The missing tech. That's also been happening recently. Again, ever since that bastard showed up. I don't have any proof to tie him to that. But things did not start going awry in the manner that they are now before he got here. So, I don't know. As for the specifics, though, uh, it's a lot of... Well, it's a lot of different camera operation technology, a few nano machine prototypes, CCTVs, CC cameras, uh, bio authenticators, weaponry, EMP components. Uh, there was a report of a neural link machine going missing and when it was when it was returned it was broken beyond repair even i couldn't fix it and uh there there has been a lot of data tampering as well so whoever is behind all of this they they know what they're doing. Also, I finished examining those crystals you all gave to me from that witch. And these are, now that I've identified them, they are of the same ethereal makeup as those left behind by said culprits. As to, again, with the soul liberators, leave their mark and instill fear into given location <sighs> so cat is there anything you wanted to say zero I swear to god now is not the time him and his shit aside <sighs> So, um, are there any, actually wait, before you get to asking your questions, those crystals that you all have been coming into contact with, have they been affecting you in any particular manner? And Drava speaks up, um, no, they haven't, unless... They're supposed to? Granted, uh, I am an ex adventure recently reclaimed the, I guess, profession. And I've come into contact with a lot of crystals my first go around, so if they should be affecting me, they're not. I've built up a, a tolerance of sorts to say, but, uh, there is this soul container that all of us are in possession of should things get you know a little too out of hand we'll have a second chance though that's how it's been told to me since I've never you know with one in my possession oh Interesting. Well, um, if you come into contact with any other types of crystals, um, bring them to me. I can, I like working with stuff like this and, you know, I can, I can come up with something beneficial to you all if I have enough of them anyway. And I would say it's time for introductions, but somebody didn't account for the meeting that they have to attend at 9 a.m. So 
I think we should show you all to your hotel. And Cynthia looks at Frankie. And Frankie looks back in complete and utter confusion until she remembers that she does have a meeting to attend at 9 a.m. And very quickly uh, gathers up her shit and makes a break for the exit of the nightclub. And as she is essentially power walking about the borderline jog out of the place she stops and approaches the party and she does a strange series of hand gestures and chanting something to herself she begins to float in place I saw the the ping on your icon. Was there something you wanted to do? No, I just was moving the mouse and it hit. Oh, okay. Uh, once she's been in the air for about a a few seconds or so, she moves herself close to the party and. All of you are engulfed in a lavender-esque glow as you all find yourselves inside of a hotel and the last thing you see are Zero and Cynthia uh, waving goodnight to you all. Token, put this. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. So where are we starting off right here? Yep. Alright, so. You all come out of the light with Francesca as she approaches the front desk and she very quickly says here's enough money give them the whatever best room that you have that they want i have to go to sleep because i mean get to i will see you all once i'm done for work all right but ta-ta and with that she vanishes as quickly as she all as she brought you all here well that was uh that was quite the uh Info dump has does is your boss always like that? Yep, she's always like that. She always talks and talks and then runs. Well, I I suppose that comes with you know doing political work and. Controlling an entire district of a city? Huh. I guess, uh... I guess we'll learn a lot more about her in the coming days while we're here. As well, I'm sure you probably know all there is to know about her, yeah? yeah she's very secretive, so I know very little. You know that again, giving given her field of work, that that actually kinda makes sense now that I think about it. Oh well, she said to pick any room, so I think I'll grab the one I'm looking at actually. Since it's, just, it's the closest one here. 
Okay, I'll take the one on the other side then. All right. Well, I'll see you in however many hours, I suppose. As Drava opens the door, kicks her shoes off, takes off majority of her gear and borderline front flips right into the bed. Henry goes to take a shower. Alright. On that note, I will be right back. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, I am returned. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay, so you said Henry was in the shower, yes? Yes. Alright. Uh, Drava is... She is in her room for the night. And... She is in the midst of coming to terms and trying to get a proper understanding as to what is happening in the city based on what she has been told thus far. And she thinks to herself... This must be a a pretty well big is an understatement, but this must be a pretty no lucrative wouldn't be the right word. Strange. Let's just I'll I'll use strange for now, even though I'm talking to myself, but I'll use strange for now. This is a pretty strange city because well back on earth um even though the big cities had all of their different sectors and cities within cities and locations and all that there wasn't anything of oh this one person 
controlled an entire district or an entire section of the place and each one has their own political dominion and it's not all too like having mayors but it's 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 like each place has its own president so to say I don't know it's it's very different very different and I'll come to get all the answers to the questions I'll inevitably have but I think for the time being while I'm here I I might as well make the most of it and it's it's interesting having a, a new member to the group I feel like I feel like what he has to offer and what he knows will be very very useful in the coming days as well none of us know shit about this place and well this is where he's from in terms of being in Palamecia Enough talking to yourself, Drava. You should go to sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep now. As Drava gets up and looks around for a light switch to shut the lights off and do as she said to herself. Well, she is now in the midst of going to sleep. Henry gets out of the shower. Can I do a roll of not slipping on the floor and busting my ass? <laughs> uh, 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 sure. Give me Apparently a, I'm not good with my feet. <laughs> give me a... Uh, I guess a dexterity roll? Okay. Wow! I survived! <laughs> okay. First roll of the day and it's a... It's a hard nat 20. Okay. Well, yeah, you do not... You do not uh, slip and bust your ass. I'm completely refreshed. And I go to sleep. <laughs> okay. And, well, because you are in a safe area and, you know, sleeping in general, uh, all of your HP and MP is fully restored. So, while you two are sleeping, <coughs> Zero and Cynthia are still in Frankie's office having a having a talk amongst each other and Zill says so what do you think about him I already know Yashua the guy with the the strange targets in his eyes if I can I'll probably try to study that a little bit since he did tell me that he can freely augment his eyesight whenever he wanted and that aside what do you what are your thoughts I think there are already people Cynthia she has a she has a hand on her chin and she says well at first glance they and based on what, you know, Miss Angelo told us, they're, they're pretty decent people, but who knows if they could suddenly decide to flip the script and switch it up on us at a moment's notice. Granted, 
I would hope they wouldn't do that, but you never know. You never know. And Zero responds with, while it's true you never know, you have a really bad habit of always assuming that someone you meet is going to stab you in the back. Granted, I fully understand why you always come to this conclusion based on how often it happened to you, but if they've been sent here by Angie herself, I think they'll be alright. Because why would Angie send someone she doesn't trust who not only defended Solace multiple times, they also stopped a pretty big threat from coming in and fucking the place up. And before you give me the whole oh, you never know and oh, I'm just preparing myself ahead of time, shut up, you stupid fucking cat. That's not how this shit works. And you know this. I've been telling you this for ten years. You know this. And you need to stop. And Cynthia, she looks downtrodden and defeated just a little bit, but she she understands why he said that and where he's coming from. And in response, she says, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of being a bitch for that. And I, I shouldn't be so preemptively judgmental and assuming but it's a habit and I know it's a habit I need to break but um yeah we'll see how they do because well everything that we wanted to discuss didn't get discussed tonight but that's also because Frankie is as good as a leader as she is she is not all that great with planning things out that involve taking fucking care of herself and other similar things. Yeah, I know. That's why she has you around. Because it's 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 way better you than me, because well, you know. I get caught up in my Workspace, your cave. Work space. So damn often that. Well, you remember the time where I didn't come above ground for damn near two months working on things. Yeah, that's why I put a timer on how long you can be down there. <sighs> Well, I understand, I understand you want me to come up and, you know, eat something or change up whatever the fuck, but, you know, you putting a, 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 a timer that would flood my fucking place if I'd be down there too long, I don't appreciate that. Yeah, well, I don't appreciate you working yourself half to death either. Fuck you. Fuck you too. Alright, well. We've got sleep to catch up on. And yes, I'm going to sleep once I go home. We've got sleep to catch up on. You have a list to be working up. And you have a boss to help out. So, get out of here. I'll be behind you soon. Okay, you dumb blonde. Fucking cat. And with that, 
the two exit the nightclub as well, as the security of the place is shutting everything down, cleaning everything up, and preparing the place for the next night. So, a few hours go by, and the scene is back at the hotel where the party is residing. It is around around 10.55 a.m. Uh, you can hear other tenants in the hotel getting up, going about their day, making noise, eating and such, eating very loudly for whatever reason, but it is the start of a new day, and a new day comes whatever the hell might happen, and as you come to, you look at the ceiling, and you can see a message on it that reads, please come to the nightclub whenever you are ready, there are some more things that need to be discussed, and some things that need to be share it with you and after you read it in full it vanishes from the ceiling so Dreva peels herself out of bed she runs inside of the shower she gets herself ready to go for the day she double checks all of her gear and equipment and she makes to open the door oh uh, he's right there <laughs> hey Henry startled I back up <laughs> he opens the door so quickly <laughs> and trip over this flower area <laughs> okay Oh, shit. Uh, are, are you okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm okay. Uh. I uh, didn't mean to start you like that. I just like to get going as quickly as possible. And I didn't think anyone would be outside the door. Uh, when you work with Frenchie for so long, you always have to be up early. Ah, well, yeah, that makes sense. Given, wait, what did you say? You were one of three uh, guards for her? Yes. What exactly does that entail aside from, you know, looking out for her general well-being, I'm assuming? Well, we also have to clean up and get the club ready for the night. And that's in all day process yes that is you have to clean all the cups from the previous night clean the tables clean the dance floor and if there was any trouble the night broken glass huh so where does the dealing with uh ne'er-do-wells across the district and helping out with the political legwork come in. <laughs> you gotta squeeze it in everywhere. She works us like slaves. So glad that I'm not staying there. <laughs> huh. Well... Hmm... I mean, for her position, as strange as this is to say, I suppose it would be better if she worked you on like slaves as compared to sitting on her ass all the time and not doing anything of note. Anywho, uh... If this is an all-day process, I suppose we should 
make our way over there. The only problem is we were teleported here. We didn't walk. Unless uh, it just so happens to be like next door or something, then that's no problem. This won't. The only way to find out is if we go outside, right? Yep. Okay. So it's you two. <clears throat> you two. Step right outside of the hotel. And sure enough, it was right next door to the. <clears throat> to the out to the entrance of her nightclub. Oh. Well, I I wasn't expecting to be right. Well, I guess we'll go inside and or I guess you'll get to work and I'll find something to do. As you all not to work anymore. <laughs> You all I'm with you guys now. <laughs> oh, right. Well, well, we had to come here anyway, so I guess if they don't, if the other workers don't mind, I'm. <clears throat> I guess I'll go be nosy for a little bit and see what's what goes on here outside of active hours or something and as Drava says that she she more or less starts buzzing around the place like a bee and just looking at anything and everything and you know making sure not to touch shit because half the half the stuff that's in the bar she has not not bar half the stuff that's in the nightclub that's operative operational and she doesn't have a goddamn clue of how it works here as compared to stuff on her dimension and she's also walking around a place and really taking in the the empty comforting atmosphere to her and as you all are just walking around I guess uh, Michael he spots you from the other side of the counter and he waves you all over hey what are you two doing here so early did Frankie call you back or something or you just don't know where else to go we have an appointment with Frankie Michael oh Oh yeah, she did say that, didn't she? Or was that, was that Cynthia? Eh, either way, uh, she's not here right now, but if you want to go wait in the back, you can. I'll unlock, I'll unlock the, the office for you. Uh, just let me find that damn key as he pulls out a, an unreasonably sized large ring of keys. And it looks like there's about several hundred of them on a single ring. Deidre, that's why it takes so long to close up. <laughs> uh, yeah, with that many keys, I'm, I, I'm sure it takes a long time to get anything opened up and closed around here. Sheesh, that that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's absurd, but that's how we do that's how we do shit around here. Lots of keys, lots of important material, and uh, a lot of moving. We uh, well, I got here roughly about two hours ago, and the night crew did what they were supposed to, and now it's the morning crew's turn to get everything ready for the afternoon crew to make sure everything is ready for night activities again and uh yeah it's well you know i'm sure henry told you it's 
it's a process. But it's a process to get shit done. Uh fuck. What was it? Or is it on my other set of keys? Where is shit? Uh Gimme a sec. I think it's I think the key I'm looking for is on my other set of keys. Let me just step over here real fast. As Michael steps away from you all and he comes back with an even bigger ring of keys as he he waves his hand through them and they it's as if they're all being pushed by a gust of wind as they circle around the ring until he stops it and ha ha here it is I just had to swing through 700 goddamn keys anyway he vaults over the counter he unlocks the room and he goes alright have at it with whatever you all are gonna do or wait or discuss or whatever I'm gonna go back to making sure we've got enough goddamn food for the night and the party steps back inside the VIP room uh, Zeril is here in the room as he appears to be working on something again and he paid no he paid no attention to the noise happening behind him you were so uh I guess we just sit and wait or something I'm gonna good to me. park myself right over here this looks comfortable I wouldn't sit on that if I were you huh <coughs> I, I, hey Rick I wouldn't sit Yo. on that if I were you why do you want to fall into a an oil canister of alcohol? Nope, no I don't. Not so. Yeah, it looks like a chair, but it's been hollow disguised as a as a canister of alcohol. You're not supposed to sit there for various reasons and various reasons will be explained later. Anyway, how'd uh how'd y'all sleep? With the, with the hotel room nice as he puts down the tools he has in his hand and actually turns to face you all and his face is dirty as shit <laughs> uh -huh. well it's been a really long time since I was inside of a hotel but the beds were nice the shower was nice. The shower was great. <laughs> well, of course, the beds you were too soft. Henry. You, you have this. If you could marry a shower, you probably would. Knowing you. Yeah, show sure, I was like, the beds were too soft, so I slept on the floor. <laughs> you. What? <laughs> the beds were too soft? I enjoy my beds to be a little bit more rugged and sturdier. It's, uh, it's a military thing. Huh. Well. Huh. Fuck. To each their own, I guess. That's first time I've heard that, though. Yeah, uh, photon beds. They're really nice. You can make them soft, or you can make them nice and rough. I see. I see. Anyway, so 
So Michael told you all how a little bit of how things work here. Uh, because the cat put a lock on my workspace, I had to bring my shit for the day here. And since you all got here way earlier than what I thought you would, while we were having our discussion last night slash this morning, I was micro-analyzing all of your current weaponry and other things of sort. And I decided to bring with me some of the things I've been working on as of late. Uh, some of these, some, and I, and I want to stress some, of these are prototypes, but everything else is, well, fully functional. Now, if I can just remember where the hell I put it all. Ah, here they are. As Zero, <clears throat> Zero reaches behind him and he pulls out a really big fucking case. Case, said case looks like it weighs several tons given the thudding sound it makes when he puts it on the table, but he effortlessly lifts it up, punches in the code, cracks it open, and he says, take a look. This is everything I bought with me for today, and all of what I brought with me. I think they'll help you all out quite a bit. Have at it, pick and Holy choose shit. what you want. Hmm. Yashiko just darts into the table. Yeah, but this is... <laughs> this is what I meant by, you know, being in the weapons business. I make shit like this all the time. Like and... A data knife. In the gates. Like in base. Back. Pulse blaster. Hmm. Ooh, it's well played. I'm going to take my drink of the day, and no, this is not alcohol. I do not indulge in day drinking. Only during late night gaming sessions. Magnus, tier 3 or lower magic. I'll take the Magnus. Oh, the, uh, the major staff? All right. What bin is all tier three or lower uh, magic attacks that lands will gain a debuff. Hundred fifty. Two hundred. Do I even have that much gold? <laughs> uh. Should. Oh, yeah, I do. I'm 270. Hmm. <laughs> the, the EMP disruptor. I like it, but it's a double edged sword. Uh huh. There's literally three things I like <laughs> Pulse Blaster. I like the last three. Magic Converter. All magic damage taken from tier 4 magic below. D 
do you all remember how equipping stuff works? A what? How equipping? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. You said I could equip three weapons at a time, right? Yes. You can. You can have. You can have three different weapons considered to be equipped, but if you want to switch one out, you have to, you know, adjust your stats accordingly. You can still use that thing as an attack, but, like, let's say, for example, you wanted to switch your, uh, your poison sniper for, for the, uh, Eterna gun, you can... You switch the stats around or make whatever changes. You can still use the sniper as an attack, but whatever bonuses came from the weapon itself, those don't apply. Yeah, I have to check. Because I'm thinking to unequipping the sniper. Just don't remember what bonuses this gun gave me. Everyday Cobra. It's not listed here what bonuses they gave me. Do you remember, Riku? Uh, if 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 I gave you a weapon that doesn't have like specific stat bonuses on it, it does not come with it. Okay. In that case, I could unequip that without worry then. Well, I only have two guns on me at the moment. Alright, let's see. While well, you all buy that, I am going to have Drava purchase a major staff. The what's the Fulger? Is it a that melee is a, weapon? Yeah, that is a sword. Like the, just okay. So the only two range weapons is the pulse blaster and the armor shredder. Uh, no. The range weapons are a Pulse Blaster, Armor Shredder, and the Eterna. The Eterna. What's the Eterna do? Amp Shot. Whenever you successfully shoot the enemy, they will lose 50 MP and gain a stack AC down debuff. Mm -hmm. AC debuff. And if you want to consider it, uh, the Dragon's Brooch is also uh, a range thing. I like the staff. That's the best thing. Especially for me. Yeah. Oh. Hey. And everything I have is tier 3 and down right now. Thirteen K Gill, twenty five K Gill. Only thing is, I don't have twenty five K. <laughs> Does the party in general have that much? Uh, individually. Yeah. Individually, yeah, I don't have that much. I have two, <laughs> two point seven. Elemental Receiver Necklace, Magic Converter, all magic damage taken from Tier 4 spells or below will cause 10% of the damage taken to be converted into MP. Okay. Yeah. Did they leave here? No. Yeah. Why? Okay. Hmm. Data knife. 
I auto have... melee and aggro. Gain I the effects of aggro and target an with the melee attack. We're gonna do this. Oh. Okay. Well. Hmm. So, Drava, in an attempt to. In an attempt in a horribly failed attempt to make everyone's spending a little easier uh, she got caught red-handed fiddling with everyone's guild pockets and when she got caught she was explaining that she was trying to spare some of her money with everyone without you all noticing but she got caught and she needs to practice being stealthy again however uh you all from drava have received an extra 30k gill to this so I'll give a little weight table gotta move over well I know what I'm purchasing is just yeah I do too Just have to like rearrange my stats. Seven seventy is my total goal after. Yeah, try and figure out how to put this one in. Okay, Sariku. So yeah. I'm gonna purchase the uh, the lightning pen. Okay. Actually, I don't think I needed that anymore. One speed and ten, five int extra. Actually, it gives me more attack. Fuck it. I'll get the data knife. Okay, so 6k, 9k. Lightning pin, data knife. The Atherna. And the armor shredder. From that here, what I have in the bottom. I just have to add plus 5 in and 10 speed, right? Yeah, and then the uh, the MP bonuses and magic attack bonuses that come with the int bonus. Okay, I don't know how to do that. 
those equations. That's the only thing. Uh, so, so I would be at 35 speed, I know that. 5 int added. So every, every 1 intelligence point is plus 2 magic attack and 35 MP. So. Not writing this down. So for every imp point, it is equal to two how much? Two magic two attack ma and thirty-five MP. Okay. And my int goes into the intelligence at the side? Yep. Very bottom right. So 22 would be... It gives me 5, right? 5. So it would be 27 int. So I get rid of the other staff, right? Uh, no, you still have it in your inventory. Okay. Unless you want to, then by all means, go ahead. Wait. How much? Right. How much would it sell for? Uh, because I would love that dragon brooch too. Gives me some more defense. And more How much MP. do you have on you after? I have seven, seven, seven thousand seven hundred. After the, the other one. Uh, you can sell it for ten k. That's enough. Okay. I could just put that. So I could get the dragon. So much add. So I have zero gil. <laughs> Man, you broke, bro. Damn. Wait, no, I have 700. Because you said it sells for 10k. So I have 700, girl. I could afford a lunch. <laughs> okay. So then. That's my perk from that. That's that. And I add. Be the dragon brooch. Mm. Once Drava finishes buying what she wants she comments man this is quite expensive and zero he takes another drink from his can and he's like well when you work in a weapons business like I do you don't have a choice but to make your shit expensive as much as I would love to give you all a discount I gotta put bread on the table too I would go to my defense. And once Zero says that, Cynthia enters the VIP office and she states, You know, as often as you say that, every time I look at our bank account, you have more than enough to put food on the table. Well, hello to you too, Cynthia. But that also, you know, covers weapons research development blah 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 you know how expensive that shit gets yeah 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 you made your point you made your point anyway how's it going guys I see you all exchanging your gear for what blondie has to offer and what he made
Yasuo is just too absorbed with his new gear. He's, like, calibrating all of his stuff. Uh-huh. You're not going to get a reply out of him unless you shake him. <laughs> okay. Okay, now that's equipped. Now for the next item. So I get e ten tent. EMP disruptor, because I, I, I do like the idea of blacking out a city. I have intelligence. And it makes would... sense for Yashua to have something like that. Actually, instead of calling it a gear item, I I'm going to call it a software nuke. Okay. Hopefully I got that right. And then match uh, MP. Cynthia. She makes her way over to the seat by Drava. And she says, Well, you're a... Uh... You buddies over there are really engrossed into weaponry, aren't they? No, it's really just Yashua. He kind of turns into a completely different person when he gets his hand on a weapon that he likes. Or, hell, when he sees a weapon he likes. 1,105. Yeah, Zero was... Well... He still is like that, even though most of the weapons he's made over the f recent years, uh, even though he's the one who made them, he still, like, gets lost in studying them, and he's always trying to come up with ways to make them better, which is, which is why I put a timer on his workspace. And... When you say that, Zero looks up at her, and you can see a little bit of lightning come out of his eyes in Cynthia's direction. I love those anime moments. You see the little rivalry between the two? Mm-hmm. Uh, ignore this roll. I am testing something. Okay. You're putting the spell in for me? Uh, I was making sure it worked on Dravis sheet. Do okay. you need help putting it in for you? Yeah, if you could put it into the, the sheet on the, the skull itself. Alright. So I could just click it. It's so good. You don't like my sensitivity? It's too high for you? I'm shooting it. You gotta get good, bro. That's how I play Apex. Max sensitivity. Max? That's max? No wonder why. If I didn't have that, I would have been like worth Good try. My team is shit, bro. Okay. Why are there no doubles? I have a question, Riku. Uh-huh. Uh, for the staff, how would I proc that debuff? What do you mean? Like, it gives a stack of debuff. Once at five. Oh, you just... The, the, the magic attack just has to hit the enemy and it will be applied. And then once, once you hit them five times with a tier three or lower magic, so those stacks will... For visual sake explode and they'll take an extra 150. Okay. Just making sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, that now that gun is officially equipped. I just have to implement the skill. Ah oh, god skills are the hard part. I'll do that after I add this item in. You know what you should do, Chris? Whenever you use a dragon's, uh... Right. 
of the dragon's brooch. Do you know what you should do? Just scream Fusrata! <laughs> Just use like random dragonborn letters. Uh, that's not right. It's not. DC easy. zero. <laughs> Yeah, something is... I rolled a zero! I'm the great... <laughs> you know, I was gonna buy the dragon's brooch, but now that uh, Chris is gonna use it, I'll get something else. So we could have more variety. Nothing really gives mana there. That I could use. What do you mean? The, the elemental receiver necklace. <laughs> That's getting hit. I don't want to get hit by uh, tier 4 magic. Well, I get hit by that a lot, so I'm going to change my mind and get that. <laughs> you can bulk that. You have the shield, remember? So you could actually just take that whole hit of the tier 4 magic and get the receiver bonus. I don't, <clears throat> I don't think I'm setting this up right. Why is that showing up as zero? That shouldn't be showing up as zero. Half damage, no MP loss. The other one was an intelligence save. There we go. I knew I was doing something wrong. What was it? I set up the, uh... I didn't set the roll... <clears throat> the rolls up properly. So if I do this again... Alright, got it. That does work. Okay. So, I need to go back to your sheet. I need to change it to this. So now, if I punch this in. And if I do this. There we go. Works fine. I knew I'd figure it out eventually. Now I can go put my stuff down there. Okay. So now I don't have the crystal stuff anymore. I sold it. I could change this to the other stuff. Cynthia also reaches into her backpack and she says, I, uh, as much as Zero hates having food around his stuff, I also brought a couple of snacks if you all hadn't eaten yet, which I'm, I'm assuming you haven't. Uh, no, they haven't, Cynthia. Not everybody gets up as early as you and Frankie and have a goddamn three-course breakfast to themselves at seven in the morning. Okay, well, that's... Okay, I can't help that, to be fair. But, um... At... I... Fuck. I got nothing. You win. This one. <laughs> Blondie. Cat. Sparks fly. I like those two characters. They're the greatest. I ship them both. Oh, trust you're gonna like them a lot more later. Oh, I was, I hope you do. <laughs> okay. Less. All right. Let me double check if I added all the stats all together. I did the lightning pin already. Amphi disruptor doesn't give you any stats. Uh, armor shredder I did already. Uh. Okay, that's everything. Uh, Riku. Mm -hmm. When I add mana, do I have to increase my intelligence, or is it vice versa? If intelligence. It's, if it's just MP, just increase your MP. Okay. Plus... All right, I burnt that much. I should have 26K left.
just just for story wise, I want to roll sleight of hand to see if Yashua is able to deconstruct a weapon and put it back together. Oh. Uh. Don't break your weapon. <laughs> um. Hmm. Okay, are you doing this just to? You do? Are you doing this in character in front of Zero? I want to yeah. do it. Like I'm doing it in character. Deconstruct the weapon. Put it together. Just to get a better understanding what I'm using, what I'm dealing with, and how I can modify it later on. Okay. Um. Because I'm assuming it's going to be a sleight of hand with intelligence or insight or something. Uh, depending on your role, uh, the scene will, the, the, the following response from Zero will either be good or bad. So. Yes, do roll sleight of hand and uh, do sleight of hand and investigation. Let's pray. And investigation. Pretty average. Hmm. Okay. So. Oh my god, hold on. I gotta close the door. Okay. Alright. Okay. So. The, the number in my head that I want you to beat was uh, 31. For him to not be yeah, like angry with you but instead uh he he watches you do it in complete and utter confusion and he in a respectful manner uh takes your gun takes whatever weapon you would something from you he properly shows you how it's done and in response, he says, next time, just ask. Because, uh, <laughs> in the weapons biz, it's, uh, even though we're cool and all, in the weapons biz, that's incredibly disrespectful to do to someone, especially after you just buy something from them. So... Try not to do that in front of anyone that isn't me and even with that don't don't do that please yashua just looks at zero with a confused face is it hmm. okay didn't think it would be disrespectful when i'm trying to learn the weapon i mean i get it i i, I fully understand that but um, if you're trying to understand it, you can just ask what went into it instead of, uh, not going out and using it in the field to understand how it works. Confused, but acknowledges. Well, that can I do something while that conversation is going on? Uh, depends on the what, but go for it. I want to test the arcane power of the staff. <laughs> Don't blow up the container that looks like a chair full of grease and oil. Yeah, you want a what? Just test the arcane power of the staff. By doing what? Just using... Let's see. A gravity spell. You... Since it's an orb, I could just control it. I want to see how well I could control it with the new stuff. 
So Dude, you, just for fun, cast it on me. You, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Jonna, you want to test the power of the staff by using gravity, yes? I think if I could boost it even further, that gravity. <laughs> well, you can't. Because gravity spells are a static ability. They can't be. They can't be overcharged or undercharged. It's just the thing. Well, then I'll just do it with fire. If anything, we're all dead. <laughs> um. Or Henry does anything stupid. Do you have a shooting range? <laughs> um. Are you asking that in character? Yes. Character, yeah. Because, like, Yashua already knows that Henry gets too excited when he has a new weapon on its hands. <laughs> okay, um... Hmm. Actually, we don't have a... The shooting range is closed right now, but... We can take you to one of many disposal sites where they are currently in the process of getting rid of all the trash built up over the week you can test the staff there henry says let's go right away <laughs> okay hopefully i see those fools in the street again Okay, so, you all mosey on over to the disposal site, and, Big ass. and <clears throat> in the, you all are starting at the, yep, right there, at the bottom, or not, not bottom, at the center of the place, you can see a very large amount of trash and non-recyclable material built up in the center. It's almost like a like a small mountain, so to say. And in that you can see a lot of burnt out and unsalvageable technology within it. Papers, food, Etc. Etc. And the workers there, they look at you all in confusion. But once they notice that you were Zero and Cynthia, they acknowledge you all, and they get back to doing what they're doing. As hoping for like an evacuation. <laughs> now, Zero, Zero approaches them, and he explains that Henry is wanting to engage in his testing shenanigans again and would thus ask all of you to go take an early lunch and try to linger around for like an hour or something because he's going to be here for a while that being said Zero approaches this light stand over here he opens a hatch presses a couple of buttons and this large space right here the square like area where all the trash is a and it and at an electromagnetic force field there we go slowly encompasses the space and zero says go crazy Hey. However, uh, don't tire yourself out because we do have to meet with Frankie in about an hour. Hey, uh, Rico, I have a question. Is that car part of our story here or that's just garbage? That is garbage. No, I was hoping to salvage it. Maybe we could have a vehicle that we, that we all could travel <laughs> together in. Before he thinks of anything, fire! <laughs> no, 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 no. See, see. Fire! <laughs> this was what I was hoping to do. 
Like, I was going to grab Henry by the back of the collar and just pull him back before he shot a spell, making him miss a target. I because I wanted target. to check out the car. <laughs> I missed the target. I rolled red. No, that's not how that works. No, you just did, like, no low damage. Okay. So, uh, he can't miss, because even though I don't have an image for it, there is a very... Uh, where's, where's my drawing tool? There is a very large pile of trash where I am drawing right here. And it's like, oh, you, you literally no can't miss it. Okay, there. Yeah, That's good. Okay, you, okay. you can't miss this. Also, uh, the way critical failures work is that if it is an attack, just a straight up attack, you do half damage. You don't miss. Unless the enemy's speed is higher than yours and you fail your roll to hit them, then you miss. I'm sure garbage has no speed. <laughs> no. So I did a measly half damage. Ugh. So I'm getting used to this death. <laughs> Joshua, are you going to shoot anything with me? To shoot anything. I have a gun. Yeah, it's, shoot. A, it's already effective. I'm not using magic. Shoot. Shoot with me. <laughs> mm. Like the old times, where I can't aim at anything very well. I have to re-edit my... I have to re-edit my skills, because I got, like... Extra 200 attack. Ugh. While Hero Henry rush. is going... Uh, buck wild crazy. Uh, destroying the trash. Zero, Drava, and Cynthia are all perched up on the same terminal that... Zero used to bring up the... The electromagnetic walls to... Contain Henry's antics. My god, he's just fucking shooting a bunch of spells. Testing out all my spells. I want to see how much they increase. Well, you don't you have to manually update your spells after getting a new weapon? Yes. Yeah, it's not going to change unless you manually update Especially your spells. Especially if your stats go up as well. However, however, since he decided to sell his starter weapon and acquire a weapon that had the same magic attack on it, he doesn't have to. Yeah. It's oh, the lucky same. him. I have to. <laughs> and I'm not good at doing that shit. Um, they were both the same stat, 200. So... Uh, Dragon Roar is a sound-based thing, and um, if you're actually going to use that, uh, you run the risk of hurting your allies, including with what you're doing right now. Ouch. <laughs> so, are you actually using that on the trash? Yeah. I'm just going to back up. So I'm going to show you what 40 feet is from Henry, because I guarantee you are still within range. I know. Dude. Oh my <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, you know what, Riku, can I roll to take off 50 meters in the air, because I don't want to be near here. <laughs> uh, Isn't there an electromagnetic field around it all? Uh, yeah, but you're not inside of it. Well, people zero drums are popping. Oh boy. Here, hold on. <laughs> Can I strength roll to kick Henry inside the field? Yes. If you fail, you're coming in with me. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's enough to kick me. <laughs> Good enough, yeah. Get the fuck in there before you burn everyone. 
He says that in character. I played well, you threw you. me into every elemental attack I just shot in there. Um, no, they don't. The spells don't bounce off walls unless they're designed to do so. But uh, he sure did kick you smack dab in the center of what? Burning, frozen, and electrified trash. Flowing all over the place because of the way. <laughs> well, well, it was a a four that I rolled, plus a ten, so it wasn't a hard right. of a kick. It just dropped you like here. I didn't kick you with terminal velocity into the fucking trash. Okay. But everybody's safe. Okay, I got my my urges out. <laughs> okay, and well, by doing that. You have also done the the trash worker's job for them for the day. So, uh... Did I get pay? <laughs> no. Damn it. <laughs> uh, once Zero notices that you're done, he hits the vacuum button, and he waits until all the trash is thoroughly sucked into or what's left of it is sucked into the grate at the bottom he hits the ignite button and whatever is left is burnt to ash and you all return back to the VIP office at, <clears throat> at Francesca's uh, nightclub All right, well, now that our resident psycho spellcaster has gotten his urges out, uh, we got a little bit more time to kill before Frankie shows up. Anything in particular y'all want to talk about that we didn't discuss last night? And if it is something that's going to be discussed when Frankie gets here, I'm not going to answer it. gonna do an inventory check he just has a small display of the items he has so you like actively going over what you have on you in character yeah like like instead of everyone else where they carry a backpack full of items yashua just has like a digital inventory He just cleans his stuff. <laughs> Which is surprising why Henry does, didn't bring this with him. Since we all have one, it's standard issue. You okay, probably so, lost yours. So, you have a... A digitizer, so to say. Mm -hmm. Drava... Not quite, essentially, but... Borderline essentially has the pocket dimension. As, you know, as she stated... You know, she carries all her shit by casting a spell on all the items and shrinking it down into something she can put in her pocket. Yep. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, it's how, you know how you, like, equip your shit in PSO? It's like that. Yeah. It just reconstructs itself, deconstructs itself when it's being put away. Okay. Okay. You better enjoy those primates. Where I used to work? <laughs> we didn't have those. <laughs> All we had was coffee and energy drinks. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So... As you want to... Going over things and... Dreva explains that the size reconstruction spell she uses to carry everything and Cynthia asks her doesn't that make it heavier though 
And Draven says, yeah, it does, but I also use a couple of different wind spells to help alleviate the weight problem. And from that point, uh, I know it's there. It's not as heavy as it could be because, well, carrying this much stuff that she takes out everything she has on her, sets it on the floor, disengages the size spell, and the amount of shit she has on her is enough to not only cover this entire table in the back, it is also enough to fill up this entire corner over here twice. And once she engages the spell again and puts the things back in her pocket, she says, yeah, if I were to not do what I do, carrying all that in my pocket, I probably wouldn't be able to walk just based on how heavy all of it would be. Huh. All right. Yashua just laughs. To ease their own, I guess. Yashua just snaps his fingers and he just materializes potions. Snaps his fingers again, materializes weapons. Again and again. As for an example, he just like lines up a roll of items. And then he could just snap his fingers again and they all just dematerialize. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Zero says loud watching you do all that. Hmm. Let me, uh... No, wait. No, mess. You mind letting me... Let me see that for a second? Hmm. Yashua, instead of giving him the device, he gives him... A literal blueprint of the device. The schematics for it. Okay, so for uh, roleplay's sake, let's say you don't have that on you. Because if you did, uh, I would have, well, had I known you had, you would have had something like that on you. <coughs> Oh, Jesus. Uh, I would have used that for something else much earlier. Okay, so he doesn't. How about I make Yashua ask for a pen and paper or something so he could draw the layout for it? Okay, that works. That works? Cool. So, you have a piece of paper, a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. I need you to roll sleight of hand and performance to see how well you draw it out. Okay. Okay. So, you... You draw out a a near perfect replica of the blueprint. You fudge a few details here and there, but it's not bad enough to where Zero can't uh, make heads or tails of it and replaces it with something that makes sense to him. And in exchange, he gives you the <clears throat> the schematics and details about how the elemental receiver necklace works. 
Oh, I was hoping for the rifle. All right. Hmm. Cynthia isn't saying much of anything because working with technology as far as weaponry isn't really her field. So she's just happily munching away at the chips she's brought with her. Up until Zero looks over, makes a face at her, <laughs> and then she stops eating the chips and nearly throws the whole bag at him. But she stops uh, I'm standing... I'm standing... Oh, okay. I got scared because I was... I'm standing right in front of him. What if it hits me? Do I have to roll for dodge? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, instead, though, Cynthia stands up because she remembered that none of you said you ate before you got here. So, she steps outside and makes you want something to eat real fast given that it's it's almost noon so while well, she doesn't make you a traditional breakfast she does bring you about three three pancakes each um a few eggs uh one really large piece of bacon and uh, some french fries on the side. Damn, we're at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> right. That schematic that I received from uh, Zerial, is that an actual item? Uh, it is an actual item, but it's just for roleplay purposes. Fair enough. Has no use. Okay. So, Yashua takes a look at the schematics. So, now that hey. you all have gotten some better gear from what you all decided to buy and uh, are now getting some food in you how are you feeling about the things you've been told thus far I'm going to need more details Fair enough. What about you, Red Eyes? Uh, Don't call me that. He, he was he was talking to Drava. We both have Red Eyes. <laughs> uh well, I uh, I haven't had to deal with a cult yet. So, first time for everything, I suppose. However, as far as the technology and the whole turf war thing going on, I I would like to do what I can to bring that to a close really soon. Because, well, whatever the technology that obviously needs to be reclaimed and well people want to feel safe at night so what better way to go about that is you know helping resolve all this turf war bullshit and hmm after Draven says that, you can hear the sound of heels clicking and clacking on the floor. 
and they don't they don't sound very friendly so to say and the louder that they get the more you begin to hear a voice said voice belonging to Michael and he says uh, excuse you ma'am uh, you are not allowed to be here right now Francesca is not here she is at work I will kindly ask you to leave and you hear <clears throat> you hear the person respond with yeah no I don't think I asked you for permission to enter the premises and I also did not ask whether my daughter was here or not so if you will scurry along and move out of my way I will come here for what I need to do and you hear Zeril and Cynthia go oh, fuck not again as they both stand up and leave the room and Zero turns to it stay here do not come out he said he says that to us yes <clears throat> what do you want Jin why are you here why are you bothering people don't you have a district to run is Zero steps in front of Michael, and Cynthia tells Michael to go back to what he was doing. They will handle this. What? Am I not allowed to see my daughter and her companions? Um, to be blunt, Jin, no. You're not. Because every time you come here, you cause problems and you know you cause problems which is why we never let you inside you're also not supposed to be here and this is not a district you've been permitted to be inside oh who cares about the the ways of the own and permission this and laws that and Cynthia goes, you old decrepit bitch, you're the one who came up with them. And and you're the one who just, who, who, who just fucking throws them to the side whenever you feel like it. It's, it's, it's always been a case of, oh, the rules apply to you, but not for me kind of bullshit. And that's why. That's why the Cynthia stop because what you're about to say is going to make things worse. Oh, well, well, it seems that your little boy toy has finally learned some manners. Don't call me a boy toy, you old dusty bitch. Aim. Do not say that again, and I promise you'll regret it. Now then, you're here for one of two reasons. You know something you're not supposed to know, or you just wanted to give Frankie and us a hard time. I'm going to assume that it's the first one. Uh, well, you know, I just received wind that a few newcomers decided to enter 
into our great, great Sterler City, and I just wanted to greet them, so to say. Jen, you know good and damn well that you didn't come here to greet them. What you came here to do was to say whatever bullshit you were going to, say whatever vitriol, talk down upon Francesca like you normally do, just to attempt to convince them to come and work for you at the night district of the city. And you know, I've got to say, it's really fucking funny how just because your district is failing, because you don't want to let go of the old teachings, that you decide to pick and poach and convince anyone who even steps foot inside of a city, whether they've been here long enough or not, to come working for you. And once they're all finished with saying that, you can hear the heels clack along the ground going backwards, and you hear a very loud and audible huffing noise as whatever Zero said hit the mark right on the money and she is most likely upset from that and before she says anything else Frankie comes inside and notices the situation oh <sighs> god Damn it. Mom, what do you want? Why, why why the fuck are you here? Causing problems again. Oh, uh, well, hello there, Doctor. You have ten seconds before I have you arrested and thrown out. Why are you here? Well, if you must know... Frank, uh, Jin snaps her fingers, and suddenly the three of you are teleported outside the VIP office. As she says, I just want to see the faces of the newcomers. I was hoping I'd have the chance to talk to them, but it seems like that isn't going to happen here. At least not on this day. And she snaps her fingers again, and three of you are teleported back inside of the place. And she says, okay, I've seen all I wanted to see. Ta-ta, as the clicking of heels uh, exit the building again. And Francesca, Cynthia, and Zero all let out a really heavy sigh in frustration as they enter back in or well, as Cynthia and Zero enter inside the, the VIP office again and Francesca follows in behind them and she she greets you all but then she jumps onto the table and sits on the table <sighs> god damn that woman I'm so, so terribly sorry all of you had to see that. I wasn't expecting to be compromised that quickly. Now she knows how we look like. Well, it wasn't so much 
I would I I wouldn't say it was compromising because she just knows what you look like. She doesn't know any of what you're capable of as far as I know, but now I have to ask with those individuals you encountered last night on your way here did you let any of them escape one girl what was her name wait 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 wait, wait. jet if i remember okay jet has nothing to do with this as she works for me so that's that was the only one that's that a, a benefit but were there any more alongside her there was another individual that i incapacitated and throw him in a dumpster okay he doesn't know our names but he didn't really get to see us fight since they kind of lost the will to fight before we even engaged. And you blew a hole in one of them. Well, I wanted to avoid reinforcements. Okay. Do you happen to speak to anyone else on your way here? I spoke to a civilian in a store for directions, but I didn't reveal any information of who we are. Okay. Maybe the bot that we talked to on the entrance? Nope. Couldn't be. That thing's mine. I made it. Mm -hmm. So then that leaves, when Somebody you here. went inside of that store, someone in there must have seen you who worked for her and ran their fucking mouth. Either way, um, we're going to have to, I'm going to put my, this is Cynthia talking by the way, I'm going to put my side of the briefing on hold and... I'm going to send out an identification sweep just to make sure that anyone else who works for that old bat isn't in here anymore. So if you'll excuse me, Cynthia walks away from you all, walks through a door and takes a seat at a computer desk and gets to type in a way. Well, this is, this is Frankie talking. Well, as long as she doesn't find out any intricate details about you all, things will be fine. And as much as I don't like having to do this, I suppose I'm going to have to send out regular data and identification sweeps just to make sure that people who aren't allowed in the entertainment district who want to cause problems aren't here. And, well, Henry knows, but the rest of you, that was my mother, Jin. She is the political figurehead and the one who runs the night district here in the city and well we very clearly don't get along very well because to make a long and estranged relationship short she is very radically set in the older ways of going about change and putting things into action and making people's lives better, etc, etc. And she does not like as 
she puts it this she does not like my modernized ways of going about things so as far as getting general consensus from the people taking people's opinions into account not ruling with an iron fist and all those things that's where that's where we differ and ever since I was elected to be the new central icon of the entertainment district she has been one of the many people actively huh, causing me problems and getting in the way of things when it's time for our council meetings and all that shit so what should we do then Well, for the time being, I do have a list of tasks I would like you all to do for me, given that now that you have made it here and there are some very serious things that need to be addressed, but until Cynthia is finished with her sweep, that won't be happening for at least a few hours, so to say. And so I guess we'll skip ahead and get to proper introductions, since didn't really have a, the moment to do so when you all arrived. So, given that you and Henry are very close with each other please grant me the pleasure of a proper introduction young man my name is Joshua Laflaga before coming here I used to be a guardian a pilot Henry here used to be my mechanic and engineer I specialized in recon intel gathering also, eliminated high-risk targets. Let's see. So, you have quite the background of dealing with people. That is, well, it's very useful, actually. The, tell me, tell me a little more about this guardian work of yours. <clears throat> we are peacekeepers, so to speak. Yet, I fall under a special branch. We are the type of people that don't exist. Officially. We take care of, uh, dangerous individuals that would disturb the peace in the terminus system. Ah, yes. The terminus system is uh, a cluster of solar systems that are connected with one another. Usually I don't get called out into a mission unless it's really, really necessary. So the majority of the time, I don't see any action. I just spend my time uh, working on my hobbies and preparing for future contingencies. So, it seems like what you did back in your dimension was not ex not necessarily one to one but more or less exactly like what I have my black ops organization for though of course it's for more internal affairs and whatnot and not 
intergalactical kind of things. But, nonetheless, it's good that you've done that kind of work. And you have experience in it. As for you, young lady, what's your background that Angela hasn't already told me about? And when she says that last part, Dreva uh, flinches for a moment. Sorry about that, guys. You get Dreva flinches for a moment when she says uh, what Angela hasn't told her. And she says, well, um, I was part of the first sets of newcomers to the world once the devourer attacked my dimension and such and I did the whole adventuring thing for as long as you know I saw necessary and see fit and it was going well enough and we got really close to um, encroaching upon its domain, but everything that could have went wrong went horribly, horribly wrong, and my comrades that I watched die that I thought were dead... Uh, some of them weren't, and uh, amongst that crew was my fiancé, who tried to use me as a sacrifice to resurrect my grandfather, and once he was dealt with, um, there were some terms that I had to come with and things I needed to stop doing that I still do on occasion. And just a very important decision I needed to make, which resulted in me once again journeying to take that goddamn thing down. And if the if if what I've heard is true, once once that thing is defeated, everyone who was forcefully transported here will have the opportunity to go back home. And at this point, I, with the few connections that I've made here, I've made Palamisia my home because, well, I can't really fathom going back to Earth anymore. That's the, the, the dimension that I come from. Um, does that answer everything and Francesca she nods in responses yes that answers um, a lot more than what I was intending for with that question but I thank you nonetheless as all information is good information in my book <sighs> so that being said, Zero, I'm assuming you've offered them exchanges and weapons upgrade, yes? She says as she takes off her suit jacket and tosses it behind her, but Zero catches it in midair and hangs it up on the coat rack. What a guy. And... Zero says, Frankie, how many times do I have to tell you to be careful with your suit jet? You know what? Never mind. I'm going to talk about that right now. Yes. I did give them weapon upgrades. Uh, I did explain last night that if they bring me more computer parts and other pieces of technology, I can do something with them. However, as for the prototype armor that I am working on that's 
not ready for them yet. I have calibrated to my personal liking and whatnot, but I need to make a neutral palette setting for people who aren't me first. Ah, speak of day, have you told them? No, haven't told them yet. I don't think now is the time for that. Okay, that is personal information to you, after all. Regardless, uh, there's more that needs to be discussed at a proper briefing. But, as I am done with my political work for the day, it is time for my afternoon recovery period. As such, Francesca stands up and she walks over to the bottom right corner from where you all are and she seemingly presses hidden keys in the air but when she's done there is a there is a pod that uh, de holograms into exi into existence for everyone else to see and she steps inside and she says I will be awake in about three and a half hours I will properly have our briefing then but I need a nap I need to mentally recover from the day and I'll see you all in a little bit and Zero says uh, make sure you set your alarm loud enough that you wake up from it this time and with that, the pod closes, it vanishes from your sight again, and Francesca is now asleep. Little Heidi Hole to take a nap, huh? Yeah, she, uh, she has quite a few of those all over the city, honestly. There is one at all of the nightclubs she runs, just in case, you know, she just needs to get away and relax for a bit, because, and I know you're probably getting tired of hearing it, but, yeah, being a politician and running a fucking city district is really stressful, and right. I don't blame her for all the naps and shit she takes. Because she doesn't, she doesn't give herself any time off. I think, hell, the last time she did, it was what, two and a half years ago, Henry? Maybe even longer than that? Pretty sure. AFK? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> You gonna answer that? Uh, don't know how to answer it. <laughs> you could just, you know, shrug and say, "I don't know." I don't know. No, just shakes his head, hands up. Ah, uh, well. Anyway, so that task list she mentioned. So you can, actually, before I do that, I need to show you all a proper layout of the city. Just let me, let me find, uh, let me find what I did with that map. It's zero. He pulls out of his pocket several different devices all of which have either city layout or 
future construction site or plans written on them and he is very quickly swifting and sorting through them as to find exactly what he needs uh, this is the problem with having all this shit so I as much as I love technology man is it a fucking pain to have to sort through them all the time I'm sure you can relate to that to some degree right Yashua little bit since uh, the technology we use uh, <laughs> we, we stopped having physical tech several years ago since we could just reconstruct and de-res when, whenever it's necessary yeah I can see how that would make things a bit easier but we could be at that point here but I keep choosing not to because well I like I like touching things so to say anyway I uh, found what I was looking for so if you would look at the center of this table here he plugs his phone <clears throat> Or one of one of the three phones into the bottom of the table, and the table lights up, and you see a full-scale map of the entire city of Sterla. So, where we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are here, where it says Corporate Center. I'm I'm using an an old map, by the way, since fucking Jin keeps denying implications of new maps and etc. But anyway, where it says corporate center, we are here. This is where majority of our base operations take place. And as for the entertainment district as a whole, it covers from up here to the city center all the way down to Lake Park the night district that Jin has dominion over covers the upper east echelon all the way down to Little Lake and as for the third district Strangely titled Azure Ryzen covers the Upper East Marinas all the way down to Charter Hill. And as for as for what Frank is gonna be having you doing, you're gonna be you know start from here. You're going to make your way over to West Hill. The city center, Lake Park, and you'll be paying a visit to the medical center. As there's someone there you need to talk to as well. So, uh, yeah, be prepared to do a lot of moving around, a lot of walking, or rooftop hopping, or however you guys decide to get around. And before you ask, we do not have a vehicle for you at the moment. You will have one whenever it gets approved. But, I... But at this point, feels like he's already a vehicle. I do know that Yashua over there, his armor has flight capabilities. So it won't be that much of a pain in the ass. But... This is a pretty big city, so <laughs> getting around is going to take a while, especially since you all don't have teleportation clearance yet. 
Hmm. We're working on getting all of that for you as well. However, what you do have clearance for are these communicator pieces. He takes a small box out of his shirt pocket and from it look the what's inside the box they all look like studded earrings but upon further inspection you can see that the the azure not azure the sapphire in the center of it can be pressed down and it acts as a communicator and a receiver and all you have to do is just put it on like an earring and from there we can talk to you internally you don't you don't necessarily have to speak aloud but if you do upon activation your voice will be silent so nobody but yourself and the person you're talking to on the other end can hear you and these will be used a lot while you're out and about taking care of what Frankie asked you to do and the first thing you're gonna be doing is uh, getting intel on all the tech that's been going missing since that's priority one at the moment with the location you're going to anyway So intel gathering is in order then. <laughs> yeah, um, as far as details, you'll have to, well, actually, no, you all don't have to fake it. Henry, you're a native here. Yashua, I know you're a tech junkie. And as for Dreva, you may not have a goddamn idea of what's going on, but <laughs> you do look like you want to understand. So what I was going to say is act as if you all don't know shit when you get over there and just ask questions, not incredibly specific questions, but just questions in general. But I don't have to say that because you all have already got that covered. Now, as for when all of this will commence, uh, not today, but tomorrow, as, well, Frankie, still want you all to continue relaxing a bit and taking a load off from your travels and have fun one more night in her main club before she puts you all to work and puts you all to solving the, you know, soul-stealing problem that's been going on. So, thoughts and opinions about what you all are going to be getting into? I have a general idea what I'm getting myself into. Now, do you have an extra copy of that map? Uh, yeah, I can send you one. Yeah, I would like one too. <laughs> All right. Unless you just send it in the chat. If you all would place your tombstones on the table, I will upload them to your devices tombstone oh right I don't have a tombstone yeah you do you got one before you left the village I don't remember ever getting one Riku that's how you got a hold of tear and fiend number because the phone that you have with you doesn't work as a phone in Polynesia. Mm. 
Yeah, well, they got one from Frankie, story based was. <sighs> Place this tombstone on the table. Same. <laughs> All right. And Drava does the same, following you all. And your tombstones glow a emerald-like color for a moment. And once the glow fades away, all of you have a copy of the map on your devices. So, I'm gonna go check on the cat, see how her sweep is going, and you all talk amongst yourselves for a bit, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be in there for a while. And once Zero stands up and walks towards office, <coughs> the scene will fade to black. And that will be the end of session for today. Like and subscribe or you're not getting a tombstone. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm hitting the stop recording button now. <laughs>